Hey everybody, Rebecca here for the next episode of the Monday Mr. Money Mustache Motivation. Mr. Money Mustache is a popular financial independence retire early blogger. On Mondays, I share a blog post of his to keep us motivated on our fire journeys. Today's blog post is from April 14th, 2014. This one is titled, How to Make Money by Happiness. I always link to these articles that I read in the description box below if you would like to learn more about Mr. Money Mustache or visit his website. How to Make Money by Happiness. What are you spending all that money on? After reading this blog for a while, you already know what's good for you, but there is still the odd slip up. A few hundred disappear here and there for the odd fancy pants luxury, or a few thousand on trips, or keeping the BMW X5 around because hey, you deserve it and Mr. Money Mustache can't actually see you driving it and bike over to punch you in the face. And if it's not you, it's your spouse. You were born with Spartan tendencies and actually enjoy line drying your clothes and chopping wood on a crisp winter day. But he or she was raised differently and just feels better with those leather seats or the extra large sports television or the nutritious $10 single servings from Whole Foods or the air conditioning set nice and cool all summer. You've tried to bring up the issue gently, but a marriage is worth more than money, right? The best way to get to the root of all this spending is to realize what we are all really trying to buy. In fact, it is the reason for every single action we take in our lives. It's happiness. When you finally upgrade to that 4,500 square foot custom dream home you've always wanted, you're not doing so because it will provide more space for your family to gather or for the killer parties you can host there. You're also not doing it to earn admiration and respect from your colleagues and neighbors. The whole deal is signed because of the feelings you anticipate it will bring you. When we buy anything, beyond the most basic ingredients for life, we are just buying feelings. If this sounds like a stretch, consider the counterpoint. Let's say that the mansion on the golf course did indeed have more room for family and friends and it even impressed others, but it made you feel like a horribly wasteful idiot every time you looked around at all the empty rooms and the worries kept you up at night. Imagine that its very presence in your life was a constant drain on your happiness. Would you still make the purchase? Of course not. And indeed, this is exactly the feeling I happen to have about giant luxury houses, which is why we're moving to a place that is a thousand square feet smaller next month now, despite an increasing level of wealth better feelings. Two different people can have opposite feelings about exactly the same situation, and in fact, one person can completely reverse his or her own feelings about exactly the same situation in a surprisingly short time. This is an enormous clue in the puzzle we're trying to solve here, so let's solve it. If we're really just buying feelings, who has the best ones on sale at the lowest price? Different people approach this problem with different levels of sophistication. At the bottom of the pyramid, you have people who seek stuff at all costs. Long ago, some of my rental house tenants could not pay the bills and had debt collectors coming at them from all directions. They spent their entire short tenure in my house trying to put up a smoke screen to dodge me, their creditors, past landlords, and everyone else. And yet inside the modern luxury house they had rented from me was the latest designer furniture, sleek electronics, high-end clothing, and a completely customized brand new Corvette. They were good at fooling me and fooling themselves, but as the sheriffs unceremoniously kicked them out on the street after the eviction court case, they may have briefly realized that they were not buying happiness. Slightly higher on the consumer thrills ladder is the new slogan of don't buy things, buy experiences, travel, take cruises, go to all the happy hours. It's a nice idea and it does work to a certain degree. Experiences are more memorable than things. After all, your favorite trip still glows warmly in your memory, even while that iPad 2 you purchased just a few years ago is hopelessly outdated now and sitting in a storage bin under the shipping boxes from your iPad 3 and iPad 4. In the mainstream media, the analysis ends there. Spending on experiences is better than spending on stuff, so just spend all your money on experiences and you're set. But there's an even more satisfying thing you can do with money, which is rarely mentioned. Not spending it. Huh? But what about all the slogans, money is no good if you don't spend it, you can't take it with you when you die, and it's better to spend money like there's no tomorrow than to spend tonight like there's no money. It turns out that these catchy bits of folk wisdom aren't in line with much of the science. More recent research on the matter is revealing that people with money in the bank or its more mustachian form of productive growing investments receive much more happiness from it than people with the more fleeting pleasures of a high income or high levels of consumption of stuff or experiences. From my own perspective as a lifelong saver, this seems completely obvious. The average consumer now lives a life that is balanced upon the razor-sharp, bleeding edge of just-in-time cash flow. Incoming paychecks are closely matched with a nearly equal list of mandatory outflows. Rents, mortgages, loans, utilities, subscriptions, gas, and fun money. 
If the inflow of money is cut off, even for such a trivial period as a single year, and let's be honest, in most cases, a single week, the consumer slips on the blade and you have a whimpering pile of entrails on the floor complaining about how difficult life is for the middle class these days. While most people assume that this is just a normal, modern life, it is actually a life of incredible and completely unnecessary stress. Families with young children get torn apart, abdomens balloon, arteries clog, 45-minute commutes occur, cars crash, and crash crimes are committed, all because of the imminent financial doom that lurks over almost every shoulder. Even your average, earnest, educated, hardworking, high-income adult endures daily stress, decreased health, greatly reduced freedom, and a generally less happy life, all over the very simple issue of an extended shortage of money. The solution is equally simple. Keeping your money. Quite contrary to the bartender's advice, every single dollar you manage to keep for yourself contributes to your well-being. The dollars bring peace because they eliminate the worry of not having enough of them. They bring freedom because you can wield them like a sword to cut new paths for yourself in life that were formerly closed. When invested properly, they multiply automatically and decrease the amount of your time you need to devote to earning a flow of them. You don't have to be an early retiree to feel this effect because benefits begin immediately. Every dollar you manage to save between zero and financial independence contributes to this peace and happiness. Of course, it is possible to screw up even this simple equation, so beware. Dollars saved beyond on the level of enough don't bring you even more happiness because enough is enough. People with fully secure and happy lives may not need the psychological crutch of financial independence to live completely free from worries. And those who cross the line from frugal to cheap may end up compromising personal relationships in pursuit of dollars, which is an unprofitable trade-off. But the point remains, if you are currently in search of more happiness and wondering how to put your growing professional income most efficiently to work in this search, the first thing you should might look into buying with that money is nothing. All right, guys, let me know what you thought of that one down in the comment section below. I liked this one because it actually reminded me of the old me. When I first got started in this whole personal finance niche and started learning about money and how it works, and I actually started using a budget, I actually started seeing some progress with my debt payoff. I mean, I was 100% a consumer sucker when I started this journey, I had $90,000 worth of non-mortgage debt just a few years ago, guys. That's crazy for me to think about now because I am no longer that person. At the time I'm recording this, I have about $30,000 left of non-mortgage debt, but I'm making progress on both of those debts. I am now definitely net worth positive. I have a six figure plus portfolio and things are just completely different today than they were when I first started this journey. And when I first got started on this finance journey of mine, pursuing financial independence to retire early, I can remember getting those feelings when I had extra money just sitting in my checking account where my first trigger thought was, oh, what can I buy? I have some money left over, that's unusual, how can I spend it? And really guys it just takes a lot of discipline and practice and time to kind of get over that now it doesn't bother me at all when i have extra money sitting in my checking account i'm fine letting it sit there and in fact my first thought now is should i just let this money sit there and not earn me any interest any money or should i just invest this extra money somewhere you know it is a completely different mindset than what i used to have i'm not saying i don't ever spend money if y'all have watched my budget reviews then you know sometimes i spend some money that might be better served in investments but compared to how i used to be i am light years ahead of where i was just a few years ago and it just goes to show that if you can stick with this, if you can develop the discipline to change your financial picture, you can do it. And it doesn't take years and years and years to start seeing the positive changes. I'm definitely not financially independent yet, but I'm well on my way. And if you had asked me a few years ago if I thought that I would be at this point now, I, 
I would have said no way. I'm grateful that I have come as far as I have. That is the whole reason I started this YouTube channel was to hold myself accountable and document the journey. So it's out there. If you feel like going back and looking at my old videos, some of my first budget review videos, you'll see. I had a shit ton of debt, guys. Still working my way through it, but it's a lot better than it used to be. And I have come to appreciate that mindset that buying more stuff does not equate to more happiness. Happiness. Some people are just naturally frugal. I was not born one of those people, but it is a mindset that can be developed over time. So I hope y'all enjoyed this one. I will link to all the other Mr. Money Mustache videos I've done at the end of this video. And I'll see y'all next Monday for the next episode. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.